So what the Rubik's Cube is, is a three by three by three cube made of smaller cubes. It turns across layers, and the goal of the Rubik's Cube is to get all the sides to be the same color. Now, the Rubik's Cube was created in the 1970s by Erno Rubik, a Hungarian architect. He introduced it to the toy market in the 1980s, and it grew incredibly popular, mostly from the frustration it caused people when they tried to solve it. Many people wanted to buy the toy because they thought, oh, I can do this, and it grew so popular that it became an icon of the 1980s. Throughout time, a community has grown around the Rubik's Cube to solve it. Everyone wants to work together to fix this problem. There was, there's been global competitions, and the current world record to solving the Rubik's Cube is held by Colin Burns at 5.25 seconds. In competitions like this, people have also solved the, Rubik, it, solved the cube in crazy ways, such as one-handed or even with your feet, as disgusting as it sounds. What the Rubik's Cube is, it represents how people can work together. The Rubik's Cube is a complex problem, and it's interesting for everyone. Anyone, you know, it's difficult for one person to solve it, but if you work together as a team, people can create ideas and try and solve this complex problem. It's incredible. The cube has also been advanced throughout time. Over the years, people have made separate iterations of it. They've shrunk it down to be six millimeters in each dimension. How small is that? They've also created it so it's got 12 faces on different sides. And so it's five by five by three and different sizes and such. Now, much of the difficulty of the Rubik's Cube comes from the way it can be moved around. Mathematicians have worked out to find that this cube can be mixed around into, into 43 quintillion different ways. Now, the cube is also incredibly frustrating because people solve it the wrong way. They go, I've got one side done, let me work on the others, and it messes up their progress. Their, the, the mental challenge comes from the way people look at the cube. They solve it the wrong way. They think that, oh, I can just do one side, but that, that doesn't work. It has to be broken down into layers. You do the first, then the second, then the third, and it makes it much more simpler. Now, also, in solving it, you need to learn patterns. This is how that works in any problem. You find the patterns, you work at them, and then you apply algorithms, sets of moves, to fix a certain issue. It has been proven, actually, that you can solve the Rubik's Cube in 20 moves or less, no matter how it is. But you may have to be a supercomputer to do that. With the, cu the Cube is also a great example of how people come together. Groups come together to solve problems like this. If we can work together to solve problems like the Cube, why can't we apply it to the world? From Pasco County to having the issue of homelessness near us, or it's a global fighting. In, in Syria, the war is horrible, and it's killing many. If we took tenacity and the time vested into working out the Rubik's Cube, why can't we do that to the world and make it a better place?